Five, four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. security systems are operational, sir. There uh, shouldn't be a thing to worry about. Yeah, that's what we thought last time. We were wrong. Certainly looks good, sir. Frankly, Shiler, at this moment, the physical contours of the RTL-2 interest me much less than the success of the whole operation. Hitchens, have the crew been given their sealed orders yet? Yes, sir. They should be opening them about now. Okay, so now we know where we gotta deliver the goods to. Now, Macklin. Have you read your orders yet? Yes, sir. Well, let's set a course, huh? Sure thing, Captain, right away. Right. I guess I'd better have a final word with the old man. Ah, uh, Savage, the only danger in this operation could arise if an enemy were to find out where your aircraft is at any given time. Quite, sir. So I want you to preserve complete radio silence. As soon as you've leveled out... I don't want to hear another word out of you. Is that clear? Perfectly, sir. Break silence only in a case of extreme emergency. Right, you've got your orders. All you got to do is carry them out. Good luck. Well, I'll sure be glad when we've delivered this little cargo. <laughs> Back to the microphone. 
currently topping the international chart, The Dangerous Game. Gee, I hope Tintin's listening. She really digs this number. Yeah, it's great. This is RTL2 calling central control. This is RTL2 calling central control. Loud and clear, RTL2. Go ahead. Central control. We are under attack. We are under attack. Three fighters with some kind of oval markings. We can't stand up to much more of this punishment. One more time. The radio's gone dead, Hitchens. You get a fix? Yes, sir. The relief aircraft are on their way. It's the third time this has happened, Shiloh. The third time. was a coincidence. What are you talking about, Alan? It's that tune, Dangerous Game. Just before the transporter crashed, they were playing it on Radio Maxwell. Well, so what? What's unusual about that? They must have played that tune a million times on the radio in the past month. Yeah, but they were playing it on Radio Maxwell before the other transporters crashed too. The first one, and the second. What are you getting at, Alan? Well, Dad, it's simply that each time these transporter planes have been attacked, the Cass Carnaby Five have been giving a live performance of their number. Live? That was pretty observant of you. But surely the Cascana B-5 can have nothing to do with this business? Well, there could be a connection, you know. Where are they now? Right now they're doing a season at Paradise Peaks. Hey, isn't that that super deluxe hotel high up in the Alps? Yeah, that's right. Well, what do you think, Brains? It's certainly an interesting observation that Alan has made. I'll get John in the satellite to radio us a, a recording of that Cascana B broadcast and see what I make of it. Right. Meanwhile, we get this hotel investigated, and I know just who to send there. Tea, milady? Oh, thank you, Parker. Tea on the lawn. And isn't it a lovely day? Oh, yes, milady. I, I was just wondering, in fact, if I might have the rest of the half to do it off. I thought I might take Cook out for a punt. Why, certainly, Parker. You deserve a break. Thank you, milady. I'll just go and change into something more suitable. 
International Rescue, Lady Penelope speaking. Hello, Penny. Jeff here. Why, Jeff, what a pleasant surprise. Penny, I'm organizing an investigation into the crashing of these rocket transporters, and I require your assistance. I see. What do you want me to do? I want you to go to Switzerland to the Paradise Peaks Hotel and investigate the Cabaret Act, the Cass Carnaby Five. Cass Carnaby? Well, there seems to be some connection. Very well, Jeff. I'll get Parker to arrange a flight at once. Jolly boating weather. Da, 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 dee, da, da. Oh, yes. When Cook sees me in this gear, she'll be like putty in me hands. Parker, we are off on a mission again. Oh, very good, m'lady. What sort of business will it be this time? Show business, Parker. I believe you have connections in the theatre world. Oh, yes, m'lady. Excellent connections. Wanda Lamour. Well, who the heck's Wanda Lamour, anyway? She's by way of being a very provocative talk singer. Ah, uh, look, Nosey. I'd really love to do you a favor. Just for old times' sake, but I run a big agency here. I can't send out to Paradise Peaks a singer I've never even heard of. Now, that is a pity. A real pity. Because I was in the States last week, and I was only saying to Punchy Patterson... Huh? Punchy Patterson? I thought he was inside. Punchy? Now, I ask you, could you see a bloke like Punchy staying long behind bars? With his muscles? Nosey, what are you getting at? You didn't tell him I'm over this side now, did you? Well, to tell you the truth, Maxie, I, I didn't really know what to do. He was in a very anxious state. Very anxious indeed. Kept on about some unfinished business. Yeah, well, all right, Nosey, I, I get the message. You, uh, you want to do a deal. That's right, Maxie. You engage Juan de Lemur at Paradise Peaks. And you keep your mouth shut. Okay, then. What's this Juan de Lemur like? Is he blonde or brunette? Good. I think that ought to do the trick. Come in. Oh... Beg pardon, miss, uh, but I was looking for her ladyship. Come in. So you didn't recognize me. Well, it looks as if my disguise is a success. I should go down well. Well, they say that if you go down well at Paradise Peaks, you'll go down well anywhere. Well, I just hope I can keep this pose up long enough. Still, the show must go on. I'm all set, Alan. Okay, Tintin. You're clear to go. Good luck. How's it going, Penny? Uh, I mean, Wanda. All right, Jeff. My flight will be departing in about ten minutes. Any new developments? Not yet. Brains is working full-time on the Cass Carnaby recording. He's exploring the possibility of melodic patterns causing mechanical changes in the aircraft. It's been established that a radio was playing in the aircraft at the time of the last disaster. You see, Alan, uh, repeated melodic patterns from the Cass Carnaby group could be used to impede the efficiency of the aircraft. But brains, the transporters, each time reported, they were under attack. It was the fighters that shot them down. True, but perhaps the music was affecting their ability to retaliate. Uh, however, I, I agree with you that there could be something in the music. Something like a musical code. Well, let's try and decode it. Penelope and Tintin will be arriving at the hotel soon. They'll need all the help we can give them.
weren't joking when they said this was the highest hotel in Europe. It really is a long way up. Yes, and I do feel rather lost without Parker. I'm beginning to wish we'd taken the roads with us. But remember what they said? It's a very long road and a dangerous one. Hmm, perhaps it's just this disguise that's making me nervous. Cheer up, Penelope. You'll be all right, provided they don't ask you to sing. Well, I'm just going to plead a little throat trouble. And that should give us a chance to get on with our investigations for a while. Look, there it is. Paradise Peaks Hotel. with the sabotage business. I can't. Now, oh, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to say hello to our next guest star here at the Peaks. I would ask her to sing for you, but unfortunately, her opening has had to be postponed because of an infection in her pretty little throat. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Miss Wanda Lamour. Gee, Miss Carano, <laughs> it was real nice of you to come round and see me like this. Uh, when did you get here? Just today. I came with Miss Lamour. Oh, yeah. Miss Lamour, the lady with a frog in her throat. I must have heard Dangerous Game a million times, but it still knocks me cold every time I hear it, Mr. Carnaby. Well, thanks. You're a bit of a knockout yourself, too, you know. And I wish you'd call me Cass. All right. Cass. But you must get tired of playing that tune. Don't you sometimes want to vary it, you know, change the tempo or something? Well, we leave that to Mr. Olson. Yeah, well, uh, kids, I hate to break this up, but I have some things to attend to. A uh, couple of points I'd like to raise with you too, Cass. So Mr. Olson's your musical arranger? Yeah. Funny guy, but he sure knows the business. Funny? In what way? Well, maybe temperamental would be a better word for it. You know, sometimes you'll make a last minute change just before we go on the air. I tell you, it drives us crazy. Still, like I say, he knows the business. Well, it's certainly funny that our paths have never crossed before, Miss Lamour. I know most of the warblers in show business. Always been around, you know. High society keeps me pretty busy. Yeah, that figures. But you're still a lady of mystery. You've told me everything and nothing. You intrigue me. Oh, that's enough about me. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Olsen. I hear you keep the Cascarnaby boys on their toes. What else have you heard? That you also are a mystery. Tell me, Mr. Olsen. 
What is your secret? Of my success or of my good looks? Both, Mr. Olsen. Both. Plenty of beauty sleep, Miss Lamore. And I'm afraid that's my cue to excuse myself from your very charming company. Oh, so soon? Good night. Psst, lady. Why, Parker? Your sight for sore eyes. What are you doing here? I've got a job as part-time bouncer, belady. I thought I might be more useful to you up here at the hotel. Oh, Parker, we seem to be having very little success. How I would enjoy one of your splendid cups of tea. Very good, belady. I'll fetch you some up at once. Mmm, just right. Thank you very much, Parker. Now tell me. How are your investigations going? Uh, well, my lady, I did overhear your Mr. Holson talking to Benito, the head waiter. He was saying something about expecting a message tomorrow morning. I wonder what he meant by that. Well, it sounds interesting. Where does Olsen live, Parker? Uh, in a chalet, uh, around the other side of the mountain. I think we ought to follow this up at once. I'm afraid he's soon going to find out that I'm a fake. Right. Let's report it to Mr. Tracy. Calling International Rescue. Calling International Rescue. How are the experiments going, Brains? Uh, well, Mr. Tracy, I've definitely established that there's some kind of electronic pattern in the music. You mean the music was really used as a code? Well, it looks quite likely, but I've still got to decode the music before I'm sure there's a code in it, uh, if you see what I mean. Laboratory. Brains, tell Dad that Tintin would like a word with him. Jeff Tracy speaking. What's the situation, Tintin? Well, nothing definite, but we feel that Olsen, the music arranger, could be the man we're looking for. The thing we don't know is whether he is working alone or whether all the group are involved. Well, Brains is pretty certain that the music has some kind of hidden meaning. Do you want any help? Not yet, Mr. Tracy. We'll let you know more definitely tomorrow, after we've called on Mr. Olsen. Nearly there. he's working at I don't know some kind of electronic computer
Did you get a close-up on it? I certainly did. He's just been giving his orders for the next sabotage operation. Come on. We've got to warn Jeff. <laughs> Give me Benino, quickly. Oui, monsieur. Hello? I see. I see. That singer that no one has ever heard of. Very well. I shall deal with them. Right. Ski thrust on. is going on up there. Why? That's Parker. Oh, my goodness. They appear to be heading this way. Oh, dear. I'm sure this isn't doing Parker's vertigo any good. I, I must apologise for the unconventional entrance, milady, but I had to apprehend him somehow. You mean that bullet was meant for us? Yes, milady. I'm afraid the masquerade is over. Our friend here had been ordered to dispose of you and Miss Tinted. I'm not surprised, Parker, now that they know we're on to their little game. We must get back to the hotel and contact Jeff Tracy. And we'll have to hide him away somewhere. Yes, I think the broom cupboard's the best place for him, miss. Out of sight, out of mind, as the saying goes. When he comes to, I hope we'll be a long way from here. I just can't get Brains and Alan to eat anything today. They say they haven't got time. Well, Mother, they've just got to get the combination of this code cracked. Well, it seems to me... Oh. Go ahead, Penny. Jeff, urgent news. We've traced the men who've been sabotaging the transporter planes. Good work, Penny. Brains, are you there? I want you up here right away. I'm on my way. Okay, Penny. We gotta work fast. Right. Now Tintin's going to show you some of the evidence. Go ahead, Tintin. Now, this, of course, was after that machine of his had done the translating for him. That's it? Oh, of course. Why didn't I think of it before? Think of what, Brains? What are you talking about? That's it. It's a cham cham. A cham cham? What's a cham cham, Brains? A cham cham is a new electronic machine that is sensitive to ultrasonic harmonics and microtones. Oh, of course. Now that I know the technique they've been using, I'll soon break their code. Right. Well, this is what we'll do. Brains will return to the lab and work out the key to the code. Penelope? Yes, Jeff? I want you and Tintin to stand by for my next message. Scott? Yes, sir? Get me Washington, D.C. Yes, sir. We've got to save that next transporter aircraft. <laughs> Well, sir, these men could be on a level. 
You know that International Rescue is an organization we can trust. Listen to me, Shiler. If we paid attention to every nut who telephoned in to say he was International Rescue, we'd never get any work done. But, sir, Washington seems to think they were the real thing. Look, I'm in charge of this outfit, Shiler, and I don't intend to make my unit the laughing stock of the U.S. Air Force just because some kook wants to play musical chairs. Is that clear? Yes, sir. No good, Father? No, Alan. They wouldn't listen to me. Washington were sympathetic, but the commander at Matthews Field wasn't convinced we were on the level. Well, Brains has worked out the key to the musical code, and he's also calculated how the tune should be altered so that Olson's message gets changed. Good. Well, from here on in, it's up to Penelope and Tintin. Only they can save that aircraft from destruction. <laughs> Let's try to tune this way tonight. There's just a few minor modifications. But, Mr. Olson, I, I don't see what the point is. Look, Cass, never mind the objections. When we drew up that contract, you agreed to do it my way. Yeah, okay then. We'll change the arrangement for the broadcast. That's my boy. Now you'd better let the other fellas know. You're on in five minutes. Thanks, Mr. Olson. <laughs> Cass, if you must alter the arrangement, you must change it to our way. Look, Tintin, believe me, if you ask me to play Dangerous Game on three, four time, I'd do it. But I, I'd still want to know why. Cass, don't let's go into that again. I can't tell you how I came to be involved in all this. Just trust me, please. Honey, this season at the Peaks is the biggest break I'll ever get. I can't break my contract. I've got to do as Mr. Olson says. Well, Father, I'm all set to go. Right, Scott. Let's hope this gamble is going to pay off. It's a desperate step I'm getting you to take, but it's the only way to prove to the Air Force that we're in dead earnest. Good luck. Thanks, Father. Right, boys, it's nearly time for the broadcast. Now let's see what's happening at Paradise Peaks. Brains, are you ready? Yes, Mr. Tracy. I told Penelope how to alter the arrangement to divert those enemy fighters. I just hope they can persuade Cass Carnaby to play it that way instead of Olson's. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to present the Cass Carnaby Five. Oh, dear. Only Penelope can save us now. I wonder where Mr. Olson has got to. A contact at the hotel has a message for us. Yes, I am getting a direction on the flight path of the transporter craft. is changing. Learn to watch every glance. She's done it. She's changing the key and the code. I read 62966. Eight. Action stations. 
Intercept transporter craft at position 629. 668. I repeat. Intercept transporter craft and destroy. the bottom of the pack. And there is that you hold up your Beware, it may be a frame. You must gamble hard when you play that dangerous game. Parker, look. The dangerous game. Right, Virgil. You better get out there to Paradise Peaks. Penelope and Tintin could be in great danger. Yes, sir. Alan, you better go with him. Yes, sir. Sir, we just received a request for permission to land. Sir, it's, uh, International Rescue. International Rescue? This is International Rescue calling Matthews Field Control. A short time ago, we tried to tell you that your transporter craft was about to be destroyed by enemy fighters, but you would not listen. What's this all about? I am now to inform you that we have diverted these fighters and they are about to overfly the outskirts of this airfield. That must be the three unidentified aircraft we just received a report about. Look, China, those are the markings. must be the fighters that Savage reported before his radio went dead. Call action stations. Yes, sir. These aircraft must be destroyed. Yes, sir. So, International Rescue have done it again. dear, I feel dreadful slipping away like this. We haven't even paid our bill. Well, it's the only way to avoid Mr. Olson. I wonder where he can be. Good. The three of them. Now to make sure they don't interrupt any more broadcasts. Strange. We've stopped. I can't understand it. Parker, press the alarm bell. Yes, milady. That sounded like the cable car alarm. What was that? I don't like this at all. Calling International Rescue. Come in, International Rescue. Jeff, it looks as if Olsen is going to get his revenge after all. I thought we were getting away too easily. All right, Penny. Virgil expects to arrive at Paradise Peaks in two minutes. What's the problem? Okay, Father, I get it. We should be sighting the hotel any moment now. The girls and Parker are trapped in the cable car. It seems like Olsen is cutting the cable. Olsen! Olsen, cut that out! You crazy fool! The cables are free! That car will never stop! What's that?
Hey, just look at that. He's cut the cable. Wait, Alan. I'm going to get close down on top of that car. When I give you the command, fire the magnetic grabs. F.A.B. He's coming very close. Right, Helen. Now. It's no use. The grabs just won't hold. Thunderbird 2 calling Penelope. Come in, Penelope. Loud and clear, Virgil. Look, Penelope, you're going to have to give us a hand with this. Let me talk to Parker. Gee, I hope Parker's got a good head for heights. Right. Lowering cables. Now. He won't make it. He won't make it in time. Hurry, Parker. Hurry. Right, Helen. Stand by with retros. Standing by. Are you all right, Parker? Oh, dear. What could have happened to him? Look, there he is.
it's nice to know that lovely tune can't be used for any sinister purpose anymore. You don't think the hotel people know we're from International Rescue, do you? No, but Cass there is pretty intrigued to know how we found out about the code. Where has Tintin got to? I haven't seen her since the last dance. Uh, oh, uh, Alan and she went out for a breath of air, I think. And tomorrow she's off home again. Oh, well, that's show business. Well, Tintin, I... I suppose you're all cut up about going back to the base tomorrow and leaving Cass and the, and the fellas. Oh, I'm getting quite used to it by now, this hello, goodbye all the time. And you know, it's always nice to get home again. <laughs>